Where's Nolan? Oh, he's busy counting money. Okay, hang on. Uh, Terry Bolcher, would you come and pray for Ryan, please? Look how modern he is, hey? I love this modern. I'm so old. I got papers. This is so good. Here, Terry. <laughs> Father, thank you that, um, Lord, your blessing is on us. Your blessing is on um, Ryan this morning. And Father, we wait to see what you have to say to us. And Lord, we're open to that, and we want to receive it gladly and um, fully into our lives. So bless him in Jesus' name. Okay, let's go. <laughs> um, good morning from my time. Um, I've got a message for you this morning that I think, if it's not applicable to your life now, it will be later on in life when you go for a challenge. And um, my heading this morning, and it's, I'm trusting God to guide this a little bit, is don't quit. That's my title this morning, is don't quit. Don't quit. Okay, Here we go. <laughs> I had a friend uh, that, I, that I grew up, uh, I was, I grew up in the Pentecostal church, okay, so I'm not going to, yes, hallelujah, so I'm not going to go into details of that this morning, but as I moved out of the charismatic church, I met this, or out of the Pentecostal church, I met this friend who was named Julian Adams, he was, when I saw him the first time, I thought, you are completely nuts, and I can't hang around you, but as I got to know his heart and his love for Jesus, I started to understand that there's something different about somebody who truly loves Jesus Amen. and somebody who just says, yeah, I love God. There's a difference. And he, he, he invested in me quite a bit. And, and one thing he said to me that really, that really hit home was, and he said, yeah, hit home, but it also took me a while to understand was, don't minister on something if you haven't experienced it. And I said, well, I can preach about anything. It doesn't matter if I've experienced it. I said, no, but there's an authority you carry when you've gone through a storm. Yeah. There's something you carry when you go through a storm. Yeah. And as I was spending time with God, God just kept on telling me this week, don't quit. About a, you can ask my wife, this has probably been a month in preparation of don't give up, don't quit. And... I want to encourage you this morning to, whatever your challenge is that you're facing, don't quit. Now, I'm still calm. I'm going to get very excited in a few minutes. So <laughs> this is me being calm and collective. Um, how many of you like hanging around people or listening to people that have gone through something and they tell you what they've gone through and they come on the other end and you go, wow, that was amazing. Come on. Yeah. How many of you like listening to somebody that's gone through something and, they, and, and you know what we love to hear? Don't we love to hear... The end of the story. The end of the journey. I received bad news. My house was this and this. And suddenly God gave me the money and I've got a new house. And we go, praise God. But do we know what they went through to get to the other side? Do we know the struggle, the pain, the hurt? How many of you are sitting here this morning and you've been told, did you hear what they said about you? How many of you have had false accusations thrown your way? How many of you are dealing with something where you go, I don't know what to do here. How many of you are facing something now that you can't see the end result, but you know and you, that you know that you know that God has your back? Come on. But the biggest thing and our biggest challenge is we need to reach a level of maturity to realize the struggle we are in is going to be there. But if we are founded in Christ Jesus, no matter what the storm, no matter what the challenge, you're going to make it through to the other side. Amen. But you've got to be rooted in Him. And our biggest problem, our biggest challenge is that if we as Christians, we can go do amazing things. We can speak amazing words. We can encourage people amazingly. But if we in the spirit are weak, we've got a problem. We've got to be strong in the spirit. And I'm not talking about just falling on the floor and rolling around. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about having something inside of you. Something inside of you that says, when the, when the, when the assault comes, when that, when that finger facing comes, you go, do you know who I serve? Yes I, yes, I feel the pain. Yes, I definitely feel the pain. 
I, I, I'm, I'm struggling with the pain. I went through stuff this week. Well, I almost found Amory to get somebody else. This is too tough because I went through a storm. But when we're in the storm, it's to find Jesus in the storm. It's to find the one that strengthens us in the storm. I want to I want to read you this story. Oh, I want to read you this verse. Before I get to that verse, I want to say this. How many of you have a hero? And don't, go, don't, don't give me the holy card, Jesus. How many of you have got a hero that you look at and you go, oh, yeah, you know what? I, I wish, I, I might not agree with everything he does, but I wish I just had that heart, that fire, that, that desire to reach my own goal. I just wish I could do that. And I'm not saying... And this is something we need to understand in the body of Christ. There are a lot of people out there that say amazing things. And they don't know who Jesus is. But God's foundational truths stay the same. You can be a disbeliever and use God's things that he's put in place. And it will have a blessing because God blesses what he said. And I remember one of my heroes that, that when I was, re- and I'm going to get to that in a few minutes, when I was really down and out and wanted to quit and give up, I, I listen to him a lot, not because he's Christian, not because he's a holy man of God, but because I needed to get hold of something that says, don't give up. Keep on pushing yourself. Don't surrender. Don't stop. Just keep on going. No matter what life throws at you, keep on going. And one of my heroes is Dwayne Johnson who said, you just can't be the person that never gives up. That's a Christian foundation. If you keep on pushing, you're going to get your breakthrough. It might not look the way you were hoping it was going to look, but you're going to get it. And I want to read this to you. And, oh, man, this gets me. It says this. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 7, I don't know if they're going to have it up. If they don't, don't worry about it. It says the following. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. I just want to get my wording right here because I want to, I want to really bring this home correctly. Let's do this. When I grew up, I was the youngest of four kids. How many of you are the youngest of kids? Okay. Now, if you're going to be honest and don't give me the holy lang- well, don't give me the holy answer and let everybody think you're weird. How many of you, because you're youngest, you got away with the most? Because you were the youngest, right? My brother and sister, oh my gosh, they would have to do some hard time to get what they wanted out of life. You want a car? You better work and get it yourself. I ain't buying it for you. I was the favorite. I was the youngest. I didn't work for the car. The car came to me. But here's the thing. You've got to be nurtured to bear something. You've got to be nurtured to bear something. We've got to get to a place where God starts nurturing us and start guiding us and start leading us to take the things that come our way. That we don't just... When the first storm hits, goes, I, I quit, I'm done, I can't do this anymore, this is just too much for me. How can you expect me to trust you, God, after what I'm going through right now? God is prepared. The struggle you are dealing now, right now with is, is the struggle that's preparing you for the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And it's never going to stop. It, it, it's never going to stop. I want to tell you that it's never going to stop. People are going to throw accusations your way. I've had people put stuff on Facebook about me. But you know what? Let's go, Jesus. Don't have time for this. Because there's a maturity level that we reach. Where the things that would normally affect us don't affect us anymore. I'm going to really preach on this now. How many of you have gone through something that when people come to you and say, Anne Marie, my cat just died. And I mean, I'm really sorry your cat just died. My life is over. No, your life's not over. You want to hear what, what, when your life is over? When you're dead and there's nothing left. Then your life is over. But when you're dealing with a fight, when you're in a fight, you have to do the best you can. And you've got to get yourself out of bed every morning. You've got to push yourself. You've got to sometimes get up when you don't want to get up. You've got to sometimes talk to people about Jesus when you don't want it because you don't have the energy. You don't have the power. You don't feel Jesus at that very moment. But that's maturity. That is the maturity that God wants to give us. And we've got to get to a place where there's maturity in us that God can start using us for greater things. But if we keep on sitting here in the corner going, God, but you said this and this didn't happen. Move on to the next thing. Hear what God wants to do. Because that thing that you're struggling with right now is not deciding your future. I'm going to jump ahead in my message. I don't really want it, but I'm going to jump ahead into this right now. You've got to realize that the position you're in right now 
does not get affected by the things going on around you. Your position in Christ does not get affected by what you are facing. What you are facing right now does not determine your relationship with Jesus. Your relationship with Jesus, that affects your situation. We've been saying for years, don't be so heavenly minded because then you're no earthly good. You need to be more heavenly minded that you can make a bigger impact in the body of Christ than what we ever had before. We've got to hear what God is saying and downpour that into others. Because God's saying, don't you dare quit. I've invested too much in you. There is too much that you've still got to accomplish. But you're listening to the enemy telling you, you're not going to make it. You're not good enough. You don't have this. You've got everything you need right inside of you. Because he has poured it out inside of you. He hasn't stopped. He's just keep on pouring in you. And you've got to take what God has given you. And you've got to look at the challenge in front of you. And you've got to hear the Father saying, don't you dare quit. Don't you dare quit. I want to read another verse to you. 2 Timothy 4, verse 7 to 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there, is, now, now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award, me, will award to me one day. Let me ask you a question. And I want you to be honest with me. How many of you have dealt with a situation where no matter what's going on in your life, no matter where you are in life, it consumes you. It literally consumes you. It's such a big challenge that you're facing that it consumes your every part of your being. And people look at you and they go, what is wrong with you? But they don't know what you're fighting. They don't know what you're struggling with. They don't know the challenge that you're facing. But God this morning wants to say to you, he's fighting with you. He's fighting for you. He's saying to you, I have fought the good fight. You're going to lay in bed at night. You're going to roll around in that bed. And you're fighting something. You're fighting something because God is saying to you, I've called you for greater things. You need to fight this thing. You can't give up now. Breakthrough is just around the corner. And we need to fight, fight, fight and never quit. Because God's victory is greater than any enemy that we could ever face. But when we fall in the place where we forget God's goodness and we forget that God, what did God do to me five years ago? What did God do to me six years ago? Six years ago, I was in a position where I literally stood of saying, God, I'd rather end it all right now than go on. Because the challenge was so great. It destroyed everything that was my foundation, everything that made me who I was, Everything that I wanted to be, every hope that I ever had, every desire that I ever had, it was destroyed in an instant. It was completely and utterly destroyed. And I, and I started a journey where I said, God, see you later. And I started to walk a different road where I didn't go into drugs or anything. Or for me, a different road is just not talking to God. For other people, a different road is doing much different stuff. But I started to walk a road. And no matter where I went, God would keep on saying to me, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. I'm not done yet. And I'll be like, God, but I'm done. <laughs> well, that's good for you, but I'm not. <laughs> and I'd go, God, stop talking to me, please. I don't want to hear your voice anymore. Bye-bye. And God goes, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna go crazy, but I'm not going to stop. I had a cousin who had an affair with another woman. And he moved out of the house. He moved in with the woman, and after about six months of living with her, this is what happened. The Holy Spirit showed up in the kitchen one night and said to him, what are you doing here? Why aren't you home with your wife? And he's like, oh, leave me alone. Every night, why aren't you with your wife? Every minute. And I'm, I'm not saying this because I'm like, here's what he told me personally within my church. He told me, and every day, God would come. It's, you got to go home. You got to go home. And let me tell you something. It's a journey. It's a journey. What he went through, I don't know. I, I can't explain to you because I didn't experience that. But, but what he went through and how he had to fight and how he had to fight and he had to fight and not give up and not quit and he had to fight. But when he got to the end, guess what? God restored that relationship. Two kids were born out of that relationship. And they are serving Jesus 
with such a fear. Every time he runs a marathon, he's got a big banner on it that says, Jesus to you the glory. Every time he runs a marathon. And I want to tell you, if God can do that for that person, why can't he do that for you? Why can't he do that for you? Why? Your wife might not be serving God. Your marriage might be falling apart. Things in your life are just terrible right now. Keep the faith. God is busy doing something. But the moment you give up is when the enemy wins. But you know what happens when you give up? He comes next to you and he says, excuse me. How are you, my son? How are you, my daughter? I want to pick you up. But dad, I'm broken. I want to pick you up. Dad, I can't anymore. I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to restore you. But dad, the challenge I'm facing, doesn't matter what you're facing. Dad, people have accused me. People have said things about me. Nobody will ever believe that you could use me again. I don't want to bet. Watch me. Because God can do anything. If we believe that, if we as the church start believing God can do anything, it's going to change the world. Your position is not affected by your situation. Your situation is affected by your position. I can't say that enough. Because what happens when we are in Christ? When I walk into that hospital room, when I walk into that drug addict, if I walk into that place where Jesus isn't, where they believe God isn't, and I start walking there, heaven enters the room. Because you are there. And when people have given up hope, people, you feel, right now, you feel like your life means nothing. Ryan, I'm there, but nobody really wants to listen to me. Nobody really cares what I have to say. I'm not even important. The fact that you are there carrying God's presence is the reason why everything hasn't fallen apart yet. Because you've got God's presence on you. And when you walk around and you talk God's word and you start fighting in the spirit and you start calling things forth and you say, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep on pushing. It's not inside me to quit. I can't quit because my father sent his son to the cross when everybody thought he was destroyed, it was over. What happened three days later? He raised from the grave. Your situation, you might feel like you are dead and counted out. And you might say, but I've given up. God's saying it doesn't matter if you've given up. Because I'm going to resurrect you. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to restore your journey. I'm not giving up on you. But you've got to get to a place where you start believing that God has a plan for you. But what do we do? We give up. And we think God's rejected us. God, do you know, have any idea how useless I have been in my life? How, ask my wife sometimes, babe, can you just please put the lid back onto the stuff when you put it in the fridge? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> she's laughing about that, but it's true. But here's the thing. I choose to believe who the father says I am and not my situation. Because my situation here we go. It's temporal. My position is eternal. It never ends. It has no end. But when we live in the temporal, of course things are going to be bad. Of course things are going to be terrible. But has the temporal met the eternal? Because the temporal is destroyed in the eternal. It's destroyed. It can't stand in the presence of God. It can't. And I don't care how difficult it sounds to you this morning. I need you to hear this. I need somebody to hear this this morning. God is saying to you, I will resurrect you if I need you. I will change your situation, but you've got to trust in me and keep the faith. Don't give up. Because what I've got for you is greater than any challenge and anything that you can face. But the moment that enemy comes in and he starts his lies, and you know what I love? When you, when you start growing in God, you can start recognizing His voice. You can start, you can recognize the voice. How many of you can recognize the voice of your father? Does, does this sound like your father? You're useless. You're never going to, God, did you see what you just did wrong? Oh, useless, useless next. Does that sound like the father? Or is the father, you know what? Doesn't matter. I'm going to raise you up. And let's do this together. Let's not quit now. The things have just started. When you're broke, you believe. When things are falling apart, we believe. 
When everything inside you says you can't do it, we believe. When your marriage is falling apart, we believe. When everything around you is crumbling and you can't see the light, keep the faith. Keep the faith. God's presence makes a difference in your situation. God's presence changes things in your situation. And the moment we get to the point where we start believing that is when things change. Now, let me tell you something interesting. Six years ago when I faced my challenge, how many of you know, I can go to Amory and say, Amory, that was a real bad message last Sunday. And she's going to go, too bad, your problem. But when her husband comes and says, honey, that was a really bad message, it's going to affect her. So six years ago, a family member very close to me said to me, you cannot do this. You don't have the capability. You won't make it. <laughs> and then God said to him, said, really? Is that what they think? Watch what I'll do with you. Watch what I will do with you when you allow me into your life. If you trust me, watch what I'm going to do with you. There's a scripture that says that we get crushed and we get pressed. And we get in the place where we feel there's no more hope for us. Let me see if I can find that for you. I've got it right here. Let me get it for you quickly. That's why I don't like using a laptop. Here we go. 2 Corinthians 4, 8, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 18 to 12. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8 to 12. I want to tell you this morning. Some people can't relate to when you tell them you're going through a battle. They can't. And I'm not trying to be, I'm not being rude or or trying to sound um, judgmental if they don't get what you're going through. They don't understand how you feel so broken and so destroyed and so crushed and so hopeless. But then Jesus steps in and he says, you might feel this way, but I am with you. You are not on your own. I am with you. You might feel totally and utterly abandoned by everybody, but I am with you. Don't you quit. I am with you. Don't you give up. But God, I've been praying so long. My mom prayed 40 years for my dad to meet Jesus. After 40 years of marriage, he finally met Jesus. Sometimes we need to pray for the breakthrough to come, and it might not come in the way that we were hoping, the time that we were hoping, but he knows better than all. He knows the journey we're on. He knows where we're going. I want to use an example of, of my cousin. Uh, the same cousin who, Jesus, to you the glory. <laughs> I mean, that takes God, okay? I couldn't do it, but good to you. He was running a marathon a couple of years ago. Um, in 2011, he ran this marathon, or 2014, one of the two. It's called the Comrades Marathon. How many of you have ever heard of that? The Comrades Marathon. Okay, good. So it is rated as 4.5 .5 out of 5 stars for difficulty. It's 90 kilometers that you've got to run. And they start at an ungodly 5.30, 6.30 hour in the morning to start this race. And to actually run this race, you've got to qualify to run it. You've got to do a whole bunch of other races. And you've got to do that race in a specific time, uh, time limit. But if you don't, they won't let you run this race. Because you've got to build your endurance. You've got to build it. Now, in the spirit, we've got to build that endurance. And he had to build this endurance. He had to build it. And every race, he would run. There was a two oceans marathon. That's half of that. And then there's another marathon that's just a little, bit, a little bit less than that one. And then the big day comes. You've now ran all these other races. It's now time for the big race to, the Comrades Marathon, 90 kilometers of total craziness, uphill, downhill, uphill, downhill. And it's hours of running. It's not an hour or two. It's 
six, seven, eight hours of just, I got this, okay? I don't got that. <laughs> I don't got that. God did not wire me that way. Thank you, Jesus. God did not make me that way. But this, but this cousin of mine, he was wired that way. I mean, any race, I, I don't know how he does it. You give it to him. He gets starting to run this race, and he's running. And he gets to the halfway mark. He's feeling great. He's feeling amazing. He's like, I cannot believe how good I feel. And he's just running. And he's running. Now, I can, that's my wife. My wife will tell you, Ryan can't run. So that's why I'm just doing this. <laughs> it's running. And he gets to the Poly Shore Hill. So it's the last hill that is straight up. He gets to the last part of the race. And violently, something happens that he can't move. He's, he's, he's physically ill. He's, I'm, I don't want to say puking, but I'm going to now. So sorry if I'm not allowed to say that. He's, that's happening. And the doctors that are on these, they, they, they're all over the place watching. But they've got to watch these runners. If any of them collapse or feel really bad, they've got to be there to help them. And they get to him and they go, you've got to stop. We're looking at your blood sugar level, everything. You can't go on. You've got to stop. Now, my cousin has this ability to get very angry very quickly when you tell him you can't do something. But he says to me, Ryan, this is not an anger of anger, anger. This is a holy anger of I have practiced too hard to not finish this race. I have come too far to not complete this. I don't care what the people are saying. I don't care what the enemy is saying. I don't care what these race officials are saying. My God has told me I will finish this race. God is telling you, you will finish your race. So what happens? He almost collapses. He's lying there and he takes these two headphones and he puts them in his ear. And he says, God, I don't know where you are right now, but I'm very angry. And I want to finish this race because you know I'm prepared for this. And you know what happens? He says, Ryan, I've never heard it this audible in my entire life like that moment. God says, today, I will do a miracle in your life. And he goes, well, was that really God? He goes, God, was that really God? Today, I will do a miracle in your life. With 14 kilometers left, he passes 600 people. He finishes the race in the fastest time he's ever finished it before. He gets to the other side. There's nothing wrong with him. Because when God steps in your situation, no matter what it looks like to you, no matter how hopeless it seems to you, no matter how depressed you feel, God wants to tell you, I'll rip that depression out of you because I can't do it. I will change the situation because that's what I do. But you've got to start keeping the faith and start believing that he can do it. He finishes the race, and you know what he does at the final part of the race? Jesus, to you the glory. This big banner. And I go, good, good for you, buddy. <laughs> but here's the thing. We've got to keep the faith. When you're in the storm and everything, see, keep the faith. Don't give up. Because your breakthrough is just around the corner. It's just there. You've just got to hold on a little bit longer. Don't let him lie to you. Just hold on that little bit more. Because you're almost there. You're almost there. Three times Jesus asked, Father, can this pass me by? Jesus wasn't a quitter. He took our sins. And he overcame it all. And then what does he do? He goes back to heaven. But what does he do before he leaves? He says, you will do greater things than what I have done when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Come on, church. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, things have to change. Because my position is greater than my condition. My position is greater than my condition. And I'm not standing up here this morning preaching something and I haven't... Church, I have gone through stuff. And I'm not trying to sound all right. I'm still looking for the t-shirt for this one. Because it's a continuous journey. You get little t-shirts along the way. Because it's a continuous journey. And even when you die, God can still resurrect you and say, here we go again. 
But here's the thing. We've got to keep the faith. We've got to keep on pushing. We have Peter who denies Jesus three times. And we have Judas who basically said, here he is, take him. This is the, this is the guy you're looking for. I love this part. I love this part. Judas, was Judas not part of everything? Did, I'm, I'm misreading the Bible because my Bible says he was there for everything. He saw the miracles. He experienced it all. But I wonder sometimes, just, and, and I'm not being, uh, Mike and, and, and Marie can help us here, but I sometimes wonder, Peter denied Jesus three times. I'll say, ouch. But you know what happened? Peter went, my position is not affected by my condition. If I go back to him, what's going to happen? He's going to accept me back. He's not going to go, you've done this. Now you will punish, be punished for. He said, come back. But Judas let his condition overtake his position. And that's why he didn't make it. Church, if we get to a point where our position starts looking at our situations out of Jesus' eyes and we start going, God, these people have said this. What do you want to say? And we don't act out of our own self, but out of him. It's going to be a difference. But it's going to be an authority that is suddenly released. And when that authority is released, things happen. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but it's going to take too long. But we all know about Saul, right? And David, Saul comes to David and says, okay, you're going to, he, come, he comes here and he sees this great Goliath. And he looks at him and he goes, I, I don't get this. I'm a little shepherd boy. I, I've been watching sheep, but I come here and you guys are in fear. You guys are scared because this Philistine is mocking our God. Do you not know who we serve? And then what happened? Paul says, put on my armor. Put on my armor and here's my sword. If you want to go fight him here, go. But it didn't fit him. It didn't work. I mean, there's a whole sermon around, he wasn't called to wear Saul's armor. There's a whole sermon around that. But this is what I want you to understand about preparation. This is what I want you to understand about preparation and not quitting. At that very moment, David could have said, but this is what Saul tells him, basically tells him, this guy that you want to fight right now, do you know who he is? If there was, if there was an announcer, on the right-hand side, we have Goliath, the guy who's crushed everybody. Nobody can touch him. He's going to crush anybody that faces him. Nobody's as big as him. Nobody's as strong as him. And he's mocking the God of Israel and nothing's happened to him. He's too powerful. On this side of the room, we have David, the shepherd boy. What is, what is your acolyte, David? Quickly, give me some. He's beaten the lion and the bear. Because Saul, uh, um, Goliath was prepared his entire life to fight. His entire life was, you are going to fight. But David understood something that Goliath didn't. You can be as strong as you want in the natural. But if you are weak in the spirit, my God's going to step into this picture. He's going to take a little rock and he's going to hit you between the head, uh, between the eyes. And when he hits you, you're going to go bang on your back and you're going to die. Because when my God steps in to a situation that seems hopeless and when you feel you can't do anything anymore, the situation has to bow its knee. And that is what happened at that very moment when David picked up those little stones. David knew exactly what he was doing because he knew the Father. He knew what the Father was saying. And I want to tell you this morning, we've got to hear what the Father is saying. We've got to hear. I preached about this a while ago. Hear what God is telling you and do what he's telling you. But I want to tell you this morning, your life, your, your, your life situation might, might not be perfect. And you might be finding stuff that other people don't understand. But I want to tell you, I know the one who does understand. And I know the one that this morning 
if we believe in faith that Jesus is, who believes Jesus is here for his presence this morning? If we believe that, then we know he's here this morning. He's in our presence this morning. He's strengthening us this morning. For every song that we sing, for every word that we speak, we are being built up. We are being built up to say, we are not going to give up. We are not going to quit. We are not going to go silently into the night. Because when we go into the night, the light follows us. And when I enter a room where there are demons, devils, whatever, my position is stronger than anything else out there. Because when I enter, the light of Jesus enters with me. Light cannot be hidden in darkness. Light is too bright. It is too powerful. And we can't quit. And God this morning is saying to you, where are you right now in your journey? Where is the enemy with you right now in your journey? Where, where is your mind right now in this journey? Where is your hope right now in this journey? But God wants to say to you this morning, I'm there. I'm there. I'm that little voice that is telling you right now, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't allow your situation to disrupt your position. But let your position rise up inside of you. Let the Father start rising up in you. Let it start awakening something in you. That when that thing starts awakening in you, and you know when the Spirit of God is on you, when that Spirit starts coming up inside of you, when that power starts awakening inside of you of the Holy Spirit, everything else, for some reason, seems a little less important. Everything else seems a little less weaker. Because when I'm in His presence, I can feel the presence of God. And while I was preparing this message, I heard God so clearly give this to me. He said to me this. The Bible says the enemy walks around like a roaring lion, seeking who he can devour and destroy. <laughs> and then God gave me this. He said to me, do you realize when the true lion of the tribe of Judah arises and he roars... The false lion, the false accusations, the false things disappear and flee because they cannot stand the presence of our God. And when we get to a point where we realize we're standing in the presence of God, the enemy has no more hold over you because God is all powerful. The Holy Spirit is all powerful. Jesus is on you. And when I, I, get, I get so excited. I don't know what it is when it comes to this. The lion of the tribe of Judah. When I hear that, I can feel the presence of God. And I don't know why it a, has such an impact over my life. But I spoke to somebody this week over the phone, one of my aunts, and I said to her, she started crying on the other side of the phone saying, I just feel the presence of God on those words. I want to tell you when the true lion, not the fake one trying to distract you, because it says he walks around like a roaring lion. He's trying to mimic. He's trying to mimic the real one, but he can't because when the real one raises his voice, the enemy flees because he can't stand in the presence of God. And I get excited about this because I know how it feels to be in a battle where everything around you tells you to quit. When you're financially struggling, when you're struggling in everything else in your life and you feel, I can't go on. But God says, yet I am here. If you call on to me, I will never leave nor forsake you. But we've got to wake up and realize God is saying, Call upon me. If you need me, call me. My angels, my heaven, I'm standing ready to help you. But you got to call on me. you got to call me. you got to say, God, here I am. I'm ready. I need your help right now. My situation is overtaking me. And God says, now I'll step in. And when I step in, your situation is going to change. Now, this is a guy who had a heart issue years ago. But when I start talking about Jesus, I can't stop. My heart has to catch up because the Holy Spirit takes over and says, come on, heart, we got to go. We got things to do. I want to tell you this morning, and I want to wrap this up. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know, how, how, and I can't try to understand how painful it is what you're going through. I can't. I can only talk out of my own. And I just want to add this in. It says that we, will fight, we must each fight our own battle. 
We can't fight somebody else's battle for them. Because if we do that, they'll never reach maturity in Christ. We've got to start fighting our own battles. We cannot fight the battles for others because they're going to use you to solve their problems, but then your, their problems become your problems. And you've got to get to a place where sometimes you say, I've got to let you go. I'm sorry. I've got to let you go. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it a little bit more if that's okay. I want to say this, that you're going to have people in your life that you go, God, why aren't they here anymore? Judas was chosen by Jesus, but he rejected Jesus. You're going to have people in your life that's going to go, we can't stand with you anymore because what you're doing, we just can't, we, 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 we don't get how you can trust God this much. And God's going to say, well, then get rid of those and get new ones because you need people around you that understand the spirit and understand what he's doing. This is what this church is about. This is a family. If one falls, we all fall. If one's in trouble, we're all in trouble. We are a community church. We are here for each other. And I want to say to you this morning, I don't know, and I say this with the greatest respect and reverence, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your challenge is. I don't know. I know what my challenges are, and I know I'm struggling, and I know how I have struggled, but I know that He has been faithful in every challenge that I faced. He's never let me down. He's always been there, and I can encourage you by saying to you this morning, He's there for you. My cousin, I phoned him, the same cousin that did all this other nonsense. I phoned him the other day. He's a Jesus freak. Like, you should see this guy. He, you know what he does? He goes literally into the vineyard. He's, he's, a, he's a farm manager. He goes into the vineyard. He goes and anoints all the vineyard. Because they've got, they've got a bug on them that's eating them. And he says to me, Ryan, I anointed this whole block with oil. And the guy who does the test came back and said, that block over there, what did you use? Because everything is dying. All the bugs are dying, but the leaves are starting to grow. And he said, I anointed it with God's oil. And when I anointed, God does something. I want to tell you there is power in God if we realize who he is. And we realize what he wants to do for us. I've got to land this point. Then you will get to the realization that he has a plan for your life. He's never going to let you go. The only one that can let go is you when you say, God, I want nothing to do with you. And even then, he's going to come after you. He's never going to stop coming after you. He's never, can, can I do something that, that we don't normally do? Can I do one thing? No, I want to tell you, brother, God's going to do something in your life. I don't know what you're facing, but God wants to say to you, he has seen your struggles. And he's going to change things because that's what he does. You have served so faithfully. God says you're so faithful. I sense God saying you're faithful. But I hear God saying, hang on, my brother. Hang on. You're going to see great things happen. I want to say to you, church, God wants to do great things. I'm going to, I'm going to stop with it. I'm going to just get the plane, go on and on and on. And then my wife, when I get home, will tell me, why didn't you land the plane? So <laughs> I'm going to land the plane. <laughs> she's very loving. I'm kidding. She's extremely loving. Why? She's amazing. Um, she said, I'm not allowed to use her in any, in any example, except when I say how great she or nice things about her. <laughs> So I want to encourage you this morning. Now, now let me land this. I don't know where you're at, but I do know the one who sees your pain. I know the one who knows where you're at. And I know this morning without any shadow, and I'm not saying this because I'm trying to hype you up. I'm saying this because I've been there where everything consumes you and you don't know where to look. But out of the corner, you just hear his voice saying, don't give up, don't give up, don't quit. But Lord, they've said this, don't quit. But Lord, they've done this, is that, don't quit. Because when I step into the situation, things are going to get messy, but it's going to change. Because when I change it, it's different. And I want to encourage you this morning. I don't, am I handing over to you, Anne-Marie? Or to, uh, um, I want, to ask, I, want to, I want to ask you this morning, where you are with God right now, I don't know where you are. I don't know where you are with God. But I do know the Father is saying, said to me during this, while preparing, this is a month of preparation. And I heard God clearly say to me, there are people that need to hear, don't give up. Don't give up. I know it's been hard, but don't quit. I know you've struggled, but don't quit. I know that it's hard, but he's there. He's there. I'm, I'm going to hand over to you. Wow. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. 
I'm gonna call the prayer team up, please. The call today is going to be if you're in a place where you feel like giving up. These lovely prayer people will pray for you. It's confidential. We heard truth this morning. We heard truth from his word about how absolutely crazy he is about his kids. So I don't care if you feel like you're giving up on a little thing or it's a big thing like a marriage or a little thing like, man, I just want to punch my kids in the face. Because summertime's coming, you know, and the kids are home from school. I don't care if you've, you know, you got stuff going on with your family and you're feeling discouraged. I want you to come up and let these lovely, lovely people walk with you to the throne and say, God says, don't give up because we are here with you. I am with you. He is in us and he works through us and we carry the light wherever we go. So let's stand. <laughs> okay, this is going to be, there's a song that I feel um, we need to sing. And, um, oof. It's a little Sunday school song, and it's My God is an Awesome God. And I'd like you to just, I'll, uh, I'm a little nervous to start because I'm not that good of a singer, so. Um, we're going to sing that song together. And after that song is finished, you're free to leave. And, uh, but take your socializing to the back so that the prayer team can have time to pray. So here we go. My God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above his wisdom, power, and love. My God is an awesome God. My God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. God. We're going to do it again. Our God, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. So the team is up here. Please use them and then uh, have a good Sunday. <laughs>